this is the option. Okay, great. We can see. Okay. The, you have access to my screen now, yes? Yes, perfectly. Okay. Good day, everybody. And thank you from my colleagues, Alessia and Mario, to give me this opportunity to hold this speech for you. And thank you for the collaboration between LIST and Chris and also FHM. Um, today, my presentation topic is tomorrow's SME or SME 5.0 or hybrid SME, a new concept in the field of small medium sized enterprises, scenarios, applications, and technologies with using the fifth wave theory. Introduction. Nowadays, we pass the first, second, third, and fourth waves and ages. And my colleagues, uh, Mario and Alicia, already explained them. Before 1970s, uh, various businesses could affect and improve the technologies, especially IT, IoT, digitalization, and economy. Since we reached the 70s, the IT technologies, IoT, and the smartness are able to change and improve other businesses, economy, education, and even impact our lives. New societies, large cities, and businesses are sensitive to challenges like pollution, lack of infrastructure, economic shifts, and health diseases. And actually today in the world, we are globally um, facing with this uh, health crisis. In this speech, I'm going to discuss about tomorrow and future. Three technological revolutions called D3 are shaping the down of the 21st century, decarbonization, decentralization, and digitalization. Aims of this speech should be discussion of health, healing the contagion of COVID-19 by using the new concept of SMEs, SME 5.0 or hybrid SME or tomorrow's SME, the, which are uh, SMEs for the tomorrow society. And they implement with implementing the fifth wave and the sustainability plus theories in tomorrow's society for future of business revolution. I said future of business revolution because in my theory, I will explain for you, since 70,000 years ago, we had four revolutions until now. And the last one is business revolution. This also aims to cover the impact of future of four technologies called fifth technologies on the tomorrow's business, including the large scale deployment of IoT, the deployment of big data and machine learning for tomorrow's business forecasting, the, the use of cloud, uh, cloud platforms for the control of smart cities and new cyber risk for this sector. Uh, I would like to ask you, please uh, turn off your microphone because the noise can make, uh, I, I can lose my concentration. SME 5.0 or hybrid SMEs or tomorrow's SMEs, scenario and application with using this theory can make us ready for the world behind COVID-19 pandemic and the other crisis, for the challenges, for the crisis, for the human resource, and for making the world a better place for living. Because in my theory, I try to forecast the future, but I'm also optimistic and say, if we prepare ourselves, if we do a comprehensive innovative digital plan, of course, we can make the world a better place for living. The FISPEF theory, which is about the readiness to change into the new age, uh, we are already entering and it forecasted a crisis and presently we are in the crisis of the COVID-19 contagion. Small, medium-sized enterprises. As you know, uh, I'm going to shortly explain for you the definition of this uh, topic, a small, medium-sized enterprises or SME. Quantitative, uh, quantitative criteria is uh, about, um, from European Commission 2005, they have between 10 to 500 employees, between 10 to 5, 50 million euro turnover. And uh, this is from the uh, Institute for Mittelstand for Schung in the 2016 in Bonn, Germany. And in European Commission, they say they have maximum 250 employees, maximum 50 million uh, euro turnover. And the qual qualitative criteria is local own, owner lead company, often family owned business, unity of ownership, management, liability, and risk, thinking globally and acting regionally. Global SMEs, which are a small medium sized enterprises in the global level. They have maximum 500 employees, maximum 50 million turnover per year, and independent and owner lead business entity, transactional uh, business entity based on new modern technologies. SMEs in Germany. Actually, in Germany, we have the 
uh, most successful small medium sized enterprises of the world. That's why Germany and German SMEs, they are leader in this field. Uh, a statistic from 2016, 3,46 uh, million enterprises in Germany are SME. 2,27 billion euro revenue, uh, that's all, uh, already 35% of overall German turnover. 17,18 million employees subject to social insurance contributions. And this is almost 60% of all employees subject to social security. And this one I put yellow is very important. 82% of all vocational trainees are working in SMEs. That's very important because uh, Mario is also expert in the field of training and education. That should in general, more than percent of people working in SMEs are from professional train or training, and they are not from uh, academic universities and etc. That shows the importance of vocational training. 208,2 billion euro ex uh, export turnover. That's something like 17 percent of all total German export turnover. SMEs sum up a total of 54 percent of net value added, and 9,4 billion euro is almost 12 percent of R&D of private business sector. In Germany, in the uh, Ministry of uh, Work, we have a uh, institution called Offensive Mitteschland Foundation. In this foundation, they made a, mod for a project model called Guter Mitteschland. And Guter Mitteschland in German language means the S uh, good SMEs. And in this uh, model, I already started a project in this model last year in my country for evaluation of the SMEs. There are for, uh, 11 factors strategy, liquidity, risk assessment, leadership, market and consumer and customer, organization, corporate culture, staff, personal or HR, production and performance process, procurement and innovation. SMEs in Germany, Europe, European Commission and world, worldwide. SMEs in European Commission is statistic from 2015. There are also some uh, more points about SMEs in European Commission. SMEs are the backbone of European economy providing the majority of uh, all new jobs. And that shows how much SMEs are important in European countries. SMEs, they have less than 250 employees, represent 99,8% of all enterprises, almost 100%. In the non-financial business economy in Europe, like European uh, uh, Commission, European Union, Norway, Switzerland, 66,3% of all European Union employees are employed at SMEs. SMEs contribute 55 or 56% of total turnover in European Commission. And now globally and worldwide, 99% of all firms in, in the OECD are SME. SMEs account about 70% of all job. SMEs generate between 50 to 60% of value add. And SMEs tend to be underrepresented in international trade, but can represent more than half of total export in value at the term when considering SMEs in direct contrib contribution to exports. This slide could show you how much I important. And I, in my theory and my model, I try to make a new concept for the small medium sized enterprise, use the ability and technologies from the way to make the uh, SMEs powerful and strong for facing tomorrow's crisis. In this uh, figure, you will see the global SME challenges and some solutions are already uh, offered. For example, we have digitalization problem, like a challenge for SMEs. And for this, we have Internet of Things, Internet of Manufacturing, Internet of Energy. Actually, in this project, Internet of Energy, I'm working as an academic leader from Germany since 2017 from nine European partners. And we are going to finish this project in this uh, year, 2020. Smartness, ubiquitous, I sustainability plus story. For example, I'm going to another one, uh, development of new products. For this one, as a challenge, we can use consumer behavior uh, study. We can do the market intelligence, product development, and strategy training. For example, for the energy cost, we can also use the IOE or Internet of Energy, which is about using Internet of Things in energy sector, sustainable methods and advices. And the last one, for example, uh, we, talk, we can talk about the uh, foreign employees. When you want to have HR from the other countries and other cultures, we can use HR, HR uh, or human resource management, human resource development, project risk management, succession, three international human resource models, like having your, uh, if, you know, the human resources from your country in your a company.
For this, we have three in the left side. We have three this dimensions of digitalization. IT infrastructure, value chain management, human resource innovation. And for this, we did the survey dimensions for the questionnaires. One was IT infrastructure for questions like IT equipment and structure, data processing and use, and IT security. And for value chain, we had the questions like digitalization of purchasing and uh, internal logistics, digitalization of pro production processes, digitalization of marketing and sale, digitalized products and services, industry 4.0 technologies. And the management HR innovation, we have these kind of questions. Policies, personal allocation and responsibility, digital collaborations and qualifications. And then for these dimensions, we did the research in three different clusters, sector clusters, size clusters, and regional clusters. From the sector, we are focusing on the three different uh, sector, craft, industry, and industry-related services. Size, a small, SMEs, they have between 20 to 50 uh, member of the staff. Medium SMEs, they have between 50 to 250 member of the staff. And large SMEs, they have between 250 to 500 uh, member of the staff. And different cities and uh, provinces in the Germany, like Cologne, Bonn, Dusseldorf, and et cetera. And then we found after this research, uh, this diagram, the spider diagram can show you the situation. If you look, the, co the or orange color is showing the industry related services. And then the yellow color showing you the industries, uh, companies, and the blue one is the craft. And you can see the industries, SMEs in the industry sector, they have more chance to become digital and then industry related services. And the last one is craft. And that, show, that can show us we need to really think about a, an a, for a comprehensive plan, especially for education, because if we want to make HR in these SMEs, you know, powerful for being ready to get readiness for the fifth wave theory to go to the new concept of SME to become digital, they really need to train, get trained for using also for the craft industry, also for uh, related industry. Also, we did another project called Sustainability Compost in based on the 20 criteria to make SMEs sustainable. And for this, as Mario and Alessia said, we, I had some different models, like seven pillars of sustainability, like SME 3D model, like uh, priority for SMEs, and blue-green sustainability. We had four main criteria and 20 sub-criteria, strategy, environment, process management, and society. For a strategy, we have a strategic analysis and measures, uh, materiality, goals, depth of value chain. For environment, we have use of natural resources, resource management, climate relevant emissions. For uh, process management, we have responsibility, rules of process, control, intensive systems, stakeholder participation, innovative or innovation and product management. And society, the last one, we have employee rights, equal opportunity, qualification, human rights, common wealth, political influence, law, com uh, law complaint, and di uh, directive complaint, and behavior. Sustainability. As you know, from the United Nations, we have the 17 sustainable development goals uh, from a research for, uh, with uh, more than 80 questionnaires, and the service was about for 7 million people. And that was one of the biggest, largest social activity in the history of United Nations. And the question is, according to this model, where should be, uh, you know, in the 2030? And my theory can help you to make a position for yourself and your company or your SME in 2030. Sustainability has also another uh, definition, livability plus quality of life. If you want to make a sustainable place, sustainable company, sustainable business, of course, you need to at first make livable, and then you can go to quality of life and sustainability. If you don't have the infrastructure, <coughs> of course, it is not possible. We have the three, the three traditional pillars of sustainability for the United Nations. That's about social, economic, and envir environment. And my model, Seven Pillars of Sustainability, has four more aspects. Okay, you know, we have uh, we had from the United Nations social, environmental, and economy, but I have technique, culture, education, and policy, politic. That's why if you look at the right uh, figure, you will see with this 
factors you can uh, score them and then after uh, a model for calculation the sustainability you can calculate the sustainability of two companies and in this blue and uh, red color i will show you the red the blue one is one company before corona uh, contagion and the red one is after and that shows this crisis could reduce the sustainability in different factors for one company for this model, you can make combination between seven pillars of sustainability and livability and quality of life. And because of lack of time, I just show you the formula then I made for calculation of effective sustainability for each factor and total. And this is sigma uh, probability of each factor times impact of each factor times the ratio or weight normal. And this is the model uh, in the right, left side, you have the pattern for the evaluation of sustainability. In the right side, you have the uh, you know, model to do the position of your company regarding to the topic sustainability. You have impact, three indexes in the 3D uh, diagram. Impacts, uh, probability, and weighting ratio. The impacts uh, and probability, they are scored between one to five, and the ratio is from one to 10. And then you can, according to that formula I already showed you, you can do the calculation. And also I have another model, sustainable business with a focus on 3D social, economic and environment. And this model can, he can help us to find how SMEs should you know, focus on the business to make the future safe. And that was the first idea for me for making a new concept for SME 5.0 or hybrid SMEs. Priority. According to this model, you can make different uh, areas of these index indexes. For example, social and environment together, economic and environment together and in economic and environment. And then um, you will do the priority. According to this model, the priority should be firstly environmental responsibility, because if you don't be responsible for in the environment, you are going to destroy the ecosystem environment. And this uh, you know, environmental collapse can destroy the life and you don't have any livability to make the business sustainable. Then this is the first priority. The second one is social cohesion. Of course, after you make this uh, livability, you need, you need to make a very good social system, social relations, social cohesion for making a platform infrastructure for people to do the business very well. And then the last one can be the economic efficiency and the business. Then I can show you. Firstly, uh, you will start from the environmental responsibility and then you are going to the social cohesion. And the last, the last one could be business and economy. One, two, and three, the uh, priority. Now I'm going to introduce my uh, fifth wave theory and the related theory and models to use them for the SME's uh, 5.0 concept. The fifth wave theory in this uh, uh, figure you will see from 70,000 years ago, the revolutions started and then the societies and the industries. Uh, and my colleagues, Mario and Alessia already showed you and explained for you, we have the uh, for example, for Society 4, uh, in, during the Second World War and Cold War, we had the SME 3.0 and SME 4.0 is now. You know, when I put my concept, I tried to put them, the other concept from when, from which period of time we had SME 3 or SME 4. And for tomorrow, uh, we are already going to uh, enter to the edge of tomorrow. We are facing uh, with the crisis, global crisis, and we need to make the new concept for uh, making this in practical level to make them hybrid SMEs or SME 5.0 for tomorrow society. This theory is going to uh, make you ready for the uh, global challenges to enter to the age of tomorrow. It forecasts tomorrow's crisis. This theory is also about tomorrow age and using the future of industry 4.0 and society 5.0 to go to the age of tomorrow. Age of tomorrow in my theory is from almost 2020 to 2030 yeah, and but we cannot really say from this border but this is just you know for understanding this is a concept this story poses to the readiness for the edge of tomorrow to the challenges and tomorrow's crisis and shocks and this is the history map of theory, this theory you will see what happened from 70,000 years ago which kind of revolution waves ages and societies we have. And then 30,000 years ago, we had the agriculture wave and revolution. 500 years ago, scientific revolution. And then in the uh, 20th centuries, 100 years ago, we had the first 
business revolution. And now we are going to prepare ourselves for the second business revolution. And as Mario and Alessio said, if we don't get prepared for the future, we just, you know, can get failure. According to this theory, we had a cognition revolution 70,000 years ago, agriculture revolution 10 to 13,000 years ago, scientific revolution 500 years ago, and the last one, uh, business revolution 100 years ago. And that was the first business revolution. And today we have the new business revolution and we need to prepare for this. And digitalization in terms of things, they can help us to prepare and get ready to this um, new age. Another one was a, a sustainable plus theory. Alessio already explained, which is made of trinity of open innovation because of the I, the small I, sustainability, as I told you, seven pillars and blue green and future of smart technologies. For the fifth wave theories, I'm going to show you just the revolution again. We have the revolution from 70,000 years ago and then 10,000, 500, 100 years ago and now. And now according to the KTB model, uh, Alessia already explained for you, uh, we have three aspects, knowledge, technology, and business. Forecasting the two days challenges and tomorrow's crisis from 2020, 2021, 2030, 2023 to 2030, based on the fifth wave theory. First of all, I'm going to explain uh, and introduce you a book from Matthias Hawks. Uh, he is a, a futurist in Germany. His uh, colleagues and him at the German Institute for Future Research, they publish a book, The World After Corona. And in this book, they try to talk about the future. And this is the book. And in this book, they say, the Corona era will not end and we never back to normal because we in one of the historical period called deep crisis. And then the last one, this period can change the course of the future and we are now in this position. You know, in this, in this book, I found very interesting because they follow the, the exactly main uh, ideas in my theory because, you know, the crisis, they are not going to finish. We have more and more, but that doesn't mean bad. And we need to be, uh, we look at this opt with the op optimistical way, because as I said, if we get prepared and if we use the enough, uh, you know, knowledge, technology and business models, then we can uh, get prepared for the future shocks and make the, you know, the world a better place for living. This is the photo of uh, Mart Matthias Hawks in Germany. And according to my research in this field, in this kind of crisis, and especially for the Corona, I, I can tell you, 12 different results. The world will change. Behaviors will change. Humanity will return. The economy after the contagion crisis, the economy is still alive and breathing. That means, yes, economy is very bad situation, but of course we can, you know, uh, make the economy strong again. The authority and power of the most technology companies. And that was the thing Mario already said. Contagion outbreak of COVID-19 and reconciliation with technologies. Privacy risk. We have in this area data security because of health, because when we are working at home, we don't need to go outside. That's why our activity and movement is less and we eat the same like before and sometimes more and we are going to be fat. That's why we need to be careful, do some exercise at home and reduce the food and also home office. And another point is uh, intensification of <laughs> Sorry, economic shifts, crisis, a strengthening bounds between people because of understanding the value that already existed. For example, I could uh, visit my families, my relatives uh, often, but now it's not really possible. And that made me, you know, understanding and thinking, oh, that was a value uh, that was already existed, but now I cannot have it. The provision of the health and medical care is evolving. Medical doctors, nurses, and pharmacies, they are in the front line to fight with the corona and resumption of the world trade. And the last one, to regain the opportunity for living in a better way and prosper the economy for a better future life. Uh, there is, I'm going to introduce you a research in UK, in London, in England, about the biggest risk to society in uh, two, next two years because of corona. They did 347 uh, surveys, and then after analyzing this surveys, they found the economic damage is the first one, 
and they made them in 31 different risk and then categorize them in five categories, economy, 10 risk, social, nine, geopolitical, six, technological, four, and environmental, two. And they found the economic risk and damage can dominate the others. And that's why having a new concept for our business, especially for small medium sales enterprises is really necessary and important. Now I'm going to show you a chain I already designed for the challenges and tomorrow's crisis. Because this change is starting now and it, we need to be careful and we need to split them. Otherwise, if, if this change can made up in the future, we are going to have a big crisis and facing with a really uncontrollable situation. First one is uh, contagion of COVID-19. The second one is economic shift. Third one is educational risk, cultural risk, risk of social economic problems like providing welfare, health, medical, pharmaceutical services, technological risk, political risks. We have environmental risk. We have risk of con consequences of some events. They never made public, you know, I'm explaining, for example, something happened in Chernobyl, explosion in Chernobyl, or something, some other nuclear test happening in some, you know, oceans or deserts, but we don't know about the consequences of these things. And maybe in the future, they make also some kind of big crisis for us. And the other risks. We need to be really careful to make them split. Otherwise, this chain of crisis from today to tomorrow can completely put us under so much pressure. For this, I'm going to show you in some, you know, figures. First of all, I'm giving you a photo with two waves. This one, or a yellow wave, is about risk of contagion of COVID-19. Because I believe today, contagion of COVID-19 is not really Christ. It's a big risk. And this can make us prepare for the future. It's like a vaccine for the businesses to prepare them for the future one. And in my theory, the next one can be crisis of contagion of the others biological attack, we don't know. And we need to really think about this because this one, humanity can also help us. If we look at the humanity, like making a value for humanity and the human being. And then in on the knee of this ocean, you have the hybrid warfare. And at the moment we are also busy with this kind of hybrid warfare. We have the Corona situation. Also we have in different areas of the world, if you follow the news, war there, war there and war in another place. In the second point, I'm showing you, now the yellow one was the contagion of COVID-19 as a risk, and then crisis of contagion of biological attack, but we have the, the small orange one. This is the risk because of economic shift. This happened according to different uh, researches, also one of them I showed you in UK in next two years in different countries. But after that, we have a bigger crisis caused by recession. That means we have bigger you know, problem in economy, inflation, and that make a big, Decision in the near future, maybe until 2021, 2023. And we have a still hybrid warfare. In the second, in the third one, we have another wave. Risk of contagion was the first one. Biological attack, crisis because of biological attack. Uh, risk caused by uh, economic shift, crisis uh, caused by the recession. But the pink one, the small one, is high greenhouse gases emission and climate pollution. At the moment, also the problem of climate pollution is a big problem. Uh, but I need to tell you, one of the consequences of coronavirus was good little bit for the you know, environment because since January or February in different countries, they had two or three months uh, lockdown and then they had to stay at work, at home and work, uh, work uh, online or home office. Then the, you know, the situation was a little bit better for the environment. That's why this is also one, a big crisis in the near future. But after that, we have the bigger, bigger one. This is the crisis caused by the climate change. Climate change is really dangerous because, as I said, this can destroy the livability. And for making a business, for making a life, for making education, for making us livable, we need to think about this. <coughs> and then still hybrid uh, warfare. The last one, you can see the risk of contagion and then biological attack. Uh, economic shift, recession, uh, greenhouse emission, uh, climate change. But after that, we are going to face the technological risk. There were some books, some movies, they tried to show us this. For example, the 
book from Dr. Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park. They try to say, yes, maybe in the future, genetic science and knowledge can be so strong and people they can produce or provide dinosaurs. But if they cannot control them, if the technology can control people, they can destroy the life. Or we watch some uh, series of movies like Terminator. I, I, I really love them because they, they gave me some ideas when I was a child for my future to make this theory. And the next one is biodiversity collapse. And this one is really, really dangerous. And if we don't get ready and prepared for the future, this can destroy the life. And it's still hybrid warfare. Okay, now with this uh, introduction, I'm going to explain for you the field SMEs 5.0 or hybrid SME. Generally, uh, IoT, digitalization, and smart management could be tools and motivation to improve HR competencies toward modern hybrid companies or SMEs, like company in the future of Industry 4, which named SME 5 by me in 2017, that are able to participate, compete, and survive in market as well as um, sustainable development. The fifth wave or tomorrow age theory founded on cultural adaptation and human resource competencies, education, training, and utilizing high technology in businesses in a path to create modern innovative SMEs concerned on CSR strategies. As Alessia said, CSR 1.0, it is corporate social responsibility, but CSR 2.0 is a little bit, you know, um, improved corporate sustainability and responsibility. That's combination of CSR and sustainability. Environmental and social sustainability and sustainable development as well as successful business that are able to uh, face with the future concert toward more sustainable and livable world to make a balance between CSR and business. Scenarios, application and technologies for SME 4.0. I'm giving you one example in mobility sector because I published some articles during 2017 until now, some articles in the mobility sector because of sustainable mobility. And as Alessia said, I'm holding lecture at the Technic University of Berlin in this field for the sustainable mobility. From the right side, you will see we have e-data, intelligent transport system, and sustainable transportation for sustainable mobility. Plus sustainable building. This is, I think, the expertise of uh, Alessia. Sustainable urban planning also. Alessia, these are your expertise. And management. When we combine them together, we are going to reach sustainable infrastructure and then deploy this with CSR strategy, a smart technology, and a smart citizen. And this gives us the smart city, as Mario said, the smart city is one of the target of the fifth wave theory. Sustainable development can make us prepared for improving the quality of life and the ability to make social responsibility. And here in the, on the knee, you can see the, fee, the SME 5.0 in mobility sector, which is focusing on business and economy and also social responsibility, environmental friendly and future planning. Price management process and scenarios. According to the fifth wave theory, global businesses are expected to enter a new phase soon called the recovery opportunity and the boom of economy in the edge of tomorrow. According to my research results, I have divided the challenge and price management process and scenarios into the following five steps. Step one, step of providing healthcare and medical services. Step two, tolerance, step to achieve stability. Step three, steps to regaining the opportunity to live again and prosper the economy. Step four, a step for forecasting, preventing, and post-epidemic exposure. And the step five is recovery and reconstruction step. Crisis management process and strategies. Business and sustainability strategies in today's challenges and tomorrow's crisis of contagion of COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 era, and the recovery strategies for the opportunity uh, to prosper the economy and are divided into the following two categories, content-oriented strategy and process Some oriented. therapy band. Sorry? I didn't understand the message. Alessia, shall I continue? Yes, yes please. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Process-oriented strategies which emphasize the change of operations and core business process and are divided into the following five categories. Strategies for sustainability and continuity of operations of the business. 
business modernization strategies, business model innovation strategies, new business development strategies, and the last one, integrated strategies with the help of innovative sustainable theories like the fifth wave and a sustainability plus theories. The fifth wave theory or tomorrow age theory based on the fifth wave and our sustainability plus, we have the following priority we already discussed. Uh, priority for the SMEs or business with environmental responsibility with the focus on blue green sustainability, uh, which is about water resources and the nature, business with social cohesion and SMEs with the focus on economic efficiency. These theories make us able to forecast, prevent and face with the tomorrow's crisis. This figure can show you the uh, idea of hybrid SME, they did not just focus on economy and business and financial focus, also they focus on CSR one and two, social responsibility, environmental friendly, energy and resource saving and future planning. For this, uh, we need to say this kind of SME, they must and they, they must have this kind of conditions and they have this kind of uh, characteristics. They are environmentally responsible, social equation, economic efficiency, digital and smart, when they are large SMEs, as I said, from 250 to 500, they have more chance to become digital, innovative. They are using the CSR strategies 1.0 and 2.0. They are the industry companies, the sectors and industry related service sectors. They are more chance to go to this point. SMEs culture and digital culture. If we want to have these SMEs, we need to have digital culture in their atmosphere, sustainable, blue, green and clean economy future planning, HR competencies, and succession planning. I'm going to show you some figures in this regard. The smart SMEs, you will see in the left side, power of digital sector is big data, IoT, cybersecurity, robotics, ubiquitous AI, artificial intelligence, neural networks, 5G, cloud, it's high, uh, hyper performance computing, internet of energy, in terms of business, and et cetera. And in the right side, we have IoT innovative for manufacturing SMEs, and industry 4.0, digital innovation centers, leadership through platforms, integration of national innovation business idea, smart regulation in industries and business, ICT infrastructure, and etc. One of the most important points in my theory is human resource competencies. Because if you want to have these SMEs in this um, concept practically in the reality, you need to have this HR competencies. To optimize the usage of a smartness in SMEs, this is really important and necessary. According to my research, since, since 2016, the, in the fifth wave theory, the future choice for the companies is not about the money or budget or not about to making the technologies. The problem is to having the enough suitable HR competencies to use these SMEs. That's why we need to have tools and technologies like Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and et cetera, for using these technologies for and future of them to capture more data to control them. As I showed you, the price was one of the biggest was in near to 2030. We cannot control the technology and they are going to dominate us. And if you watched some movies or some books, some people, some philosophers, they already tried to tell uh, these stories to us. In the future, we need to be careful. Otherwise, technologies can dominate us. People to analyze data to control devices not out of the standard condition. For this, we need some kind of competencies in SMEs, HR, technologies, infrastructure to provide the required data for this HR. In this HR, we need to have some experts to do innovation, implementation, development, and apply these technologies to make the smart SMEs. You know, I showed you, the model I showed you really can help us to do this. And the, uh, the theory I sustainability plus also focusing on innovation in technologies. In the next slide, I would like to show you the people and competencies we need to use this smart technology for SMEs. The cultural factors and HR competencies are the most important challenge in using a smart technologies. That's why it is important to make these technologies simple and user friendly for HR. And how is a model to make how to create SME to make them smart for the new concept. Why, who, how, where, whom, what, when, 
What if, what for, how many? When you want to make this SME, first of all, you do this question to make a scenario, and then you make the startup and then provide your startup to become a small, medium, or big SME. SME 4.0 was another uh, definition because when I wanted to make my definition for SME 5, I had to make the definition for the SME 4.0. SMEs, uh, business model, they have traditional SMEs and the smart digital SMEs and the smart innovative SMEs. Traditional business SME, like, you know, we do the business like the restaurant, like the shop, they're using the, the supply chain management system. But digital uh, SMEs, they are using the, uh, you know, web, uh, web uh, or internet or IoT like business we are doing at the moment, we have so many uh, successful business like Amazon, eBay, uh, Alibaba, they're using this model. And the next one was one of the model, I got this idea from the thing uh, Bill Gates did in his business, because according to this one, he did innovation because based on a smart market, intelligent and consumer behavior, for example, Bill Gates tried to make a need for people and then try to give them service. Because until nine, because you know, I, I, as I, uh, as I, said, and as my, my, Alessia explained my CV and resume, I'm coming from the engineering background and uh, I, I'm using the internet since uh, 1990. And I was one of the first people in my country to use internet. That, that's why until 1995, we didn't have windows like we have today, like disk operating system. That's why he did a very clever idea to make a need for people to do that. That's why I made this model a smart innovative SMEs. And then from the smart digital SMEs based on internet and the small innovative SMEs, we have the SME4. But for making SME5, we are going to next step. This is also another, show, another figure to show you the meaning of SME4 in industry four. A smart system, business system, manufacturing system, process system, provide system, and marketing system. How we can move from SME4 to SME5? First of all, we need to go, go to the smartness, blue green. And then blue green economy developing with the seven pillars of sustainability and then get sustainable development, go to blue green infrastructure, creating modern sustainable and livable area for the uh, SMEs with using this model. This model, uh, I, because of lack of time, I didn't explain, but this is a model can help you to get rich uh, the sustainability, digitalization and innovation in your SME making for making a world a better place for living. From SME4 to SME5, make you uh, able the SME for more access to markets, for protecting the ecosystem, more competitiveness, more social responsibility, providing the environmental friendly products, more opportunities in blue green value chain, for the entrepreneurship in blue green labor market, for marketing and making successful SMEs and companies for the future, making the world a better place for living, for energy saving, focus on uh, energy and changing waste to energy for more skillful HR and talents with focus on innovative employees. You know, I have been living in Copenhagen for five years. When I was working there, I had chance to work with the former mayor of Copenhagen, Bo Osmos, in the company Sustainable Platform. And we did for something like three years um, business and research on changing waste to energy. For more clean logistics and blue green mobility, for more clean service and maintenance for less risk related to uh, challenges of SMEs, for more SMEs with the renew renewable energy and reduction of greenhouse gas emission and sustainability. For this also, I have another model uh, for some steps to make your SME sustainable and innovative and smart. First, SME acceleration programs, Second, innovative and technology upgrade processes. Third, promotion of entrepreneurship and inclusive business. Four, capacity building and knowledge transfer. Five, access to financial services. And six, the last one, knowledge platform. Okay, then according to the fifth wave theory, we had the first revolution 70,000 years ago for cognition. Second revolution 10,000 years ago for agriculture. 500 years ago, we had the scientific revolution. 100 years ago, we had the business revolution. But that was the first business revolution because now we are going to age of tomorrow or age of uh, new concept society six, tomorrow society, industry 5.0 or SME five. This is exactly the topic according to this theory. And also we are looking at this one from another view from the society. We had the society one or hunting society, something like 70,000 years ago. And then society two, agricultural society, 13,000 years ago. We had the society three, 
and that was in the 17th century. And then society four was the uh, 20th century. Society five started in the 21st century, but now we are going to prepare for tomorrow, uh, the fifth wave, society six, tomorrow, industry, society, future shock, tomorrow readiness, and SME 5.0. Conclusion, I'm going to conclude my presentation. Before 1970s, education could develop the IoT technologies and after 1970s, IoT could develop education. In conclusion, IoT application in business are limitless and we are already seeing in the sum of the smart business today. To clarify the interest of IoT as a solution for business, we introduced some new concept like SME 5.0, risk mitigation and balance between operational and financial costs. Today's challenges and tomorrow's crisis change. We need to split this change to make the rest in readiness. Creating a new concept for SMEs. world confront global challenges that this threaten meeting is the future recorded. of the world and humanities. It is vital to deal with the challenges to develop sustainability business and make the world and society area as a better place for living. Creating sustainable and successful modern innovative SMEs called hybrid SME or SME5 is a solution. High technologies, HR competencies, proper management like smart energy management, IoT, and CSR strategies knowledgeable and expert capital through education and vocational training. IoT and smart management could be tools and motivation in, to improve HR competencies toward modern hybrid SMEs, SME 5 and Urban 6. Uh, what is the future research and suggestion and scenario? Actually, uh, my colleagues, they will explain for you. We have a plan for a new conference in 2021 regarding to this future scenario. I'm going to invite you for the you know special issues I have uh, already published in different journals in Switzerland and USA. And thank you so much for your attention and I'm prepared and ready for questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very, very, thank you very, very, very innovative presentation. And uh, I said thank you too. Now to give very, very, probably, yeah. not probably, it's sure we have to continue this discussion, open, open the floor to other people and to create a new network of this topic. But now, if you agree, I would like to give the floor to Maria. To we have you. two questions. To uh, okay, you. I have also one question. If you agree, okay. we can yeah. first of all to give the us to the questions. Okay. What do you think? It's okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Okay. No, oh, Maria. Please. The first question, shall I read out those? Shall I read out those questions? Yes. yes okay. Please. Yeah, yeah, Professor Deuce, we got two questions, uh, first uh, from me and then from David also. Uh, I'll read aloud the one from David first. It, it says that will the educational system respond quick enough to COVID and the fifth wave as outlined by Dr. Deuce? Actually, one of the most important points in this theory is human resource and human resource competencies because uh, as I said since 2016 I'm working in this project and I found most of the companies when we talk about human resource they think this is about education and training and finish but competencies is something else and uh, this is about qualification and etc that's why uh, I, as I said I was economic leader for one project for European Union Erasmus Plus project since 2017 called Internet of Energy qualification and education. And that means we need to divide this point, education with qualification and competencies. And uh, as I said, the, the fifth wave theory try to forecast the future. In the future, the problem is not budget or making the new technologies. The problem is how and uh, how, which kind of uh, HR competencies should we have to prepare the HR to face with the technology to use them 
to control them and not uh, you know happening something like crisis of technology they want to dominate us yes david you got the answer yes thank you very much yeah that makes sense yeah. thank you david thank you thank you uh, Dr. Just a second question that's uh, just a very basic one, but that's from my end. Um, what educational risk do you perceive or do you forecast or you have researched so far? Very good question. Especially in, said, in the recent context. Yeah, very good question. Actually, as I said, I have been living in Copenhagen for five years and I had chance to work with some expert people in Copenhagen and be consultant for the former mayor of Copenhagen, Bo Asmus. And in that, uh, you know, situation, I found so many uh, interesting topics in the field of education, training, and competencies. And uh, as you know, uh, in different countries since 15 or 10 years ago, they have started to use e-learning. That's why when the corona happened since January or February 2020, you know, yeah. they, well, they could transfer the education online. For example, today I had my lecture in the morning online. And that means, that was a solution. But as you said, the risk in this field is important because also I was advisor in my country for the University of Vocational Training and Technical Training. And the problem for them was how they can do this online because maybe for the academic sector, theoretical perspective, this is possible to do online, but for the vocational training, technical training, they have to work with hand, with machines, with tools, how this is possible online. And I said, also did, we did this in the project, we did IOE, Internet of Energy Education Qualification. And actually our partner in Italy from the Institute of Motori in uh, Napoli, they also did some research in this field. Also another colleague in Madrid, also in Spain, also in Germany. And that was the solution demonstration uh, systems because in this system, you can use the simulation systems and then they can help you. You are doing online, but also you can get the result. For example, if you use, for example, uh, you are a computer or electro electronic engineer, you want to use the oscilloscope to do some result of your uh, mo model you made. But actually in this case, your model is conceptual model and you need to make everything in the simulation way. And the most risk in education is from vocational and technical uh, education or training. Okay, right. Thank you so much. So uh, do I conclude in a way that uh, uh, when we say the education risk, it's more specific towards the vocational and the technical part of education? Mostly a technical part, yes. But actually, we have, so we have solution in different countries for this, using these demonstrators or using a STEAM. This is also another method for this kind of technical education. Okay, right. Thank you so much for You're the welcome. detailed response. Uh, shall I start with my part of presentation? May I talk about the English? No. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. right, thank you. Uh, I mean, just to, uh, uh, one second. Okay. Yeah? Yes, please. Okay. And uh, you consider a lot of factors related to the small media enterprise. I would like, because this is my job, of course, to def better define the role of a human being and the organizational factors. Because in my opinion, in the next uh, era, then the fifth or sixth, we have to uh, speak about training as a personal professional responsibility, because we have to define the methodologies, the tools and instruments, the criteria and strategy, but is the responsibility of each person to take care of increasing their professionality. And we have to offer, I spoke before, about the professional qualification or micro credential. What do you think? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mario, for your uh, question. And that shows uh, you already focused on the point for education and HR and qualification. Actually, uh, this point, you know, is, uh, you know, the seven pillars of sustainability, the seven pillars uh, uh, try to focus on, beside economy, social, and environment, try to focus on <clears throat> technology, education, culture, and 
um, technology education talk culture and um, technology education culture social environment politic okay technology education culture and politic they are for more for the traditional model or pillars of sustainability as you see education social and culture they are related to each other when we talk about education you cannot say education is something separately from the other aspects or pillars then for education we have two more one of them is social another one is cultural that means for educational approaches in the fifth wave theory we need to have some models theories some definition in the field of culture and also in social because if you for example as i said i was in copenhagen and i saw some interesting thing in the field of education and competencies why because in danish culture this is you know i have been living there and also in germany this culture completely different that means different culture can influence the situation for the fifth wave theory that's why in the conference we want to make in the near future according to the fourth aspect of crest we are focusing on this point to have different research areas because i just try to show you an overview but for each one we have one research project or maybe more than one and this point you said about education education culture and uh, social they are really close to each other and also you cannot say the others like politics uh, so um, economy and environment cannot influence they also can influence and for this basically using the technology because today without technology we could not able to make this webinar that shows that also for education you need to focus on two more factors culture and social and then the other pillars of sustainability and then according to the model because also i said i have model mathematical model to do calculation you are able to calculate and using the data from uh, multiple regression from the questionnaire and interview from different SMEs in different eras for example in europe in some uh, because we, we divided already to western and non western the technologies but now when we talk about western also there are some cultural dimensions and in different cultural dimensions you have different solutions for doing cultural adaptation that's why i have another theory unless you already introduced called dct or dus cultural theory in this theory i am using mathematics to do cultural adaptation with using multiple regression that's why i think for this question we need to really make a big uh, project and divide maybe to some some sub projects and do then get the idea for different countries maybe for italy the solution is completely different with germany and different with uk thank you very even much. we are all western thank you hope the answer was enough yeah May uh, I ask a question? There's one more question in the chat box. Um, yeah. yeah, I have a question to, to the professor, if you don't mind, Maria. I can't hear you. Okay, professor, uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, not much, much better now. Yes, professor. Uh, thank you for this great presentation and sharing your uh, theory and research results with us, which I'm sure uh, it will be of a great interest to policy makers across the countries. But um, for a simple uh, business owner like me in the field of education and training, where I adopt a high bird model of training, how would the results of your theory uh, present a kind of guiding recipe to my education business? at least for the coming 10 years. Okay. Uh, as I said to the question from Mario, for answering to this question for your business, as I said, we need to, uh, first of all, do a research about your business, in which country, in which area, which kind of HR uh, you have from which countries and which culture, what is your business sector and etc. Because you saw different project I introduced in the theory, like. For example, in Germany, when they want to do digitalization, the companies, they are in the industry sector, they have more chance to become digital. That's why these are also important infrastructure and structure to give the answer. But if I want to give you um, one general answer, I'm going to back to my PowerPoint again. Um, 
Can you see my screen now? No. He's not sure yet. How about now? Yeah, it's now. Yeah. So. Yes. You can see here, uh, for this, we need to have five scenarios. First of all, a step of providing health care and medical services, tolerance, a step to achieve stability, a step to regaining the opportunity to live again and prosper the economy, a step of forecasting, preventing and post epidemic exposure and recovery and reconstruction step. And then for this, we need to have two main strategies, content oriented and process oriented. Content oriented, which mostly indirectly, indirectly change the nature of business by changing the structure, culture, and leadership. But second one, or, uh, process oriented is, which emphasize the change of operation and core business processes and divided to five categories. And these are the categories, uh, sustainability business model, business modernization, business innovation, business development, and integration. That's why for your question, we, I can just give you this general answer because if I want to give you answer for your business model, for your business situation, I need to have information, for example, which country, which HR, which technology, which culture, and et cetera. And this infrastructure can help us to make a research with this you know, general plan to make customized plan or solution for your business challenges or crisis. Okay, that's great, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 